Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. The most common way to simplify radicals is by splitting the integers into their products that are perfect cubes or perfect squares. That's what we're going to be working on here. In order to use this method, you have to be able to memorize and identify the perfect squares and perfect cubes. So here's what I'm talking about. You have to memorize how 1 squared is 1, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, 10 squared, 11 squared. You have to memorize this stuff. Not only memorize what they are, but also be able to recognize numbers that have those as factors. Um, same thing with the cubes. Cubes means a number times itself three times. So 1 to the third is 8. 2 times 2 times 2, I'm oh, sorry, 1 to the third is 1. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. Times 3 again is 27. 4 to the third power, 5 to the third power, 6 to the third power, 7 to the third power. I'm going to stop there because these numbers are getting pretty big. And if you were asked to do these without a calculator, you probably wouldn't be working with numbers quite as big as 243. So let's look at an example. Um, I have square root of 32x to the third. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start with the integer, 32. And instead of 32, I'm going to write it as the product of two perfect squares. Um, now, some people, when they see this, they're going to think of, oh, okay, 4 times 8. And 4 is a perfect square, so I'm feeling good about this. Um, and they'll leave it like this. But this, of course, is not the most simplified form because square root of 8 is square root of 4 times square root of 2 again. So really, this means 2 times 2 square root of 2, which is 4 square root of 2. That's one way to do it, but it's kind of long. What happened is this student or this person didn't recognize that there's a bigger perfect square that goes into 32, and that bigger perfect square is 16. Okay, so I could use 16 square root of 2. Square root of 16 is regular old 4. There I am with the 4 root 2 part. Okay, now let's deal with the x's. x to the third, I'm going to split up as x squared times x, because the square root of x squared is regular old x. And then if I rearrange this in a more conventional way, where I have my non-square roots together and my square root things together, there it is. This is the simplified form of the square root of 32x to the third. By the way, I'm making a note here that x is greater than 0. Um, I'm just, for now, I'm not going to be showing you guys how to do the absolute values. Um, so if you know what I'm talking about, you would have to deal with absolute values here. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just forget I said that. But absolute values um, are something that you may or may not be asked to do when it comes to simplifying square roots. Okay, let's look at one other one. This is a cube root. Cube root, I know it's cube root because it has that little 3 right there. So I want to look at which of my perfect cube numbers, which of those lists, what's the biggest one that multiplies into 250? Well, 125, that's pretty good. So instead of cube root of 250, I'm going to split that into cube root of 125 times cube root of 2. Notice how I'm writing these little 3s there, the index. That's a common mistake that students make. They leave those out because they're feeling kind of lazy. I don't know why, but... Okay, then I have cube root of x to the third, cube root of regular old x, and then that y to the sixth, I'm going to split it up as cube root of y to the third, cube root of y to the third. Okay, all of these things are being multiplied together, so let's go through and simplify. Cube root of 125 is 5, cube root of 2 can't simplify that. Cube root of x to the third is x, cube root of x can't be simplified. Um, cube root of y to the third is y, cube root of y to the third again is y. Okay, let's rearrange all that. Numbers that got out were the 5 and the x, and I have a y squared. And then I'm left with the cube root of 2 and x. Um, this is a fine way to write your answer. I personally like to put parentheses around this to show that that 3 up there is the index. It's not some kind of exponent. But this is a way you could simplify radicals. This is the most common way. And in order to do this, you have to memorize not only the perfect squares and cubes, but also to be able to, rec to recognize when you have factors and multiples of those. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. <laughs> <laughs>